Good morning, Vikings, and welcome back to VTV. I'm Brooke. And I'm Callie. On today's show, we will learn the purpose behind the upcoming Day of Silence, and we find out what really happens during one of those anime club meetings. Today is April 3rd, 2014, and you're watching Viking Television. be one of the quietest days of Trayan all year long as students participate in the annual Day of Silence. The National Day of Silence is a day of action in which students across the country take a vow of silence to call attention to the silencing effects of anti-LGBT bullying and harassment in schools. Camille Rogers tells us more in our first segment. Preparation for the Day of Silence, the GSA has prepared um, several posters for a poster campaign that will be running throughout the week. Uh, in addition, in the three days preceding the Day of Silence, we'll be set up in the cafeteria. We'll have forms for supporters to fill out about why they support the GSA and the queer community at the high school. And we'll also be giving out uh, palm cards for the Day of Silence um, that you can give to your teachers. I think the Day of Silence is really important in terms of spreading awareness uh, of LGBTQ bullying, um, and I think it's really important to show solidarity with those in your community um, that are LGBTQ, have experienced bullying, but also to let the, the LGBTQ community in the school know that you support them. I think some of the bullying comes from insecurity, also this is a moment where a lot of people are finding themselves and I think Sometimes that leads to situations that are less than desirable. And I think some of it also comes from a lack of knowledge or understanding um, in, in that situation. And I think the more education that we do around the issue of uh, bullying in general, but specifically LGBTQ bullying, uh, the less issues we'll, we'll have around that. It is a day of silence, but it is so much more than that. It is showing people that it is okay to be who you are. Being different is beautiful in so many ways. One of the newest organizations on campus this year is the Anime Club. But what exactly is anime and what do club members do during their meetings? VTV asked some of the movers and shakers of the club to explain. What do you think the anime club is? Isn't it just a whole bunch of people watching TV? Um, I think it's about people that say after school watching videos. I don't know anything about it. Me either. I think if I were a student, I'd probably be in it, because you can just be yourself. It seems like a pretty chill. Uh, I think it's probably a divine display of Darren Bridgewater's excellence and intelligence on cartoon animated wonders. Most people have the idea that the anime club or other anime clubs are things like sitting around and, I don't know, watching Pokemon or the things that you might have seen on Saturday morning cartoons. Those might be some of the more popular ones that have made it over here, but I can probably guarantee that it's nothing like what we'd be watching. So what do you do in the anime club? Um, every week we watch like a new series. We pick like a random series that's showing right now, and we watch the first couple episodes of that. 
so that members of the club can get an idea for the series. Our main goal will be to introduce people to new animes that they can watch and discuss and just find new things that they like. Is it true that the anime club is secretly a support group for socially awkward people? <laughs> no, of course not. What are you talking about? Uh, we watch all sorts of different anime series, and sometimes we'll hold little raffle contests and discuss other animes. So, uh, why did you decide to join the anime club? I joined the anime club to just hang out with people that enjoy the medium that I enjoy too. Why do you need an after school club just to watch Saturday morning cartoons? This isn't the Looney Tunes, Mark. When you get hit by a boulder, you die. And this isn't Tom and Jerry. When you get hit by a frying pan, it hurts. Alright, well I created it because I just thought it would be fun. <laughs> anime is fun and it's a great way to bond and meet different people who have the same interests and there's not a lot of ways to do that other besides just going over the internet so we thought it would be a cool idea to do it in school. So uh, what do you have to say to anybody who's uh, curious about the anime club? Just come in any Tuesday after school, check it out for yourself, it'll be free the first time. Uh, show up for a week. It's pretty awesome. You can just see if you like it. Uh, to come to an anime club and try it out because your first time at club is always free. So come and see what we're watching and decide if you like it or not. Hi everyone, we're the Triton Middle School Actors. We're in rehearsal for Rapunzel and Me, the classic story with a new twist. Listen, I don't mean to scare you. Too late for that! There's this mother, she's a witch, and a shy lad. Oh, he's the prince, and a girl with the longest hair. It gets better. There's even a moral to the story. Up next is a heartfelt and passionate editorial by our own Pat Moran, who channels his inner Miley Cyrus to answer the question, whose party is this anyway? My fellow Americans, I have one question to ask you. Whose party is this really? Are you just going to let somebody you don't even know tell you how to live your life? No! I know I won't stand for this sort of outrage, so why should you? See, my homegirl Miley Cyrus, she said it best when she let the world know that it, our own beautiful lives, is our own party, and we can do whatever we want. We can kiss whoever we want. We can sing whatever we want. So my friends, listen to what I say. Don't you ever let anyone think that they have the power to control your life. The best way to live is to keep all that control to yourself. Miley lives by this rule every single day because she understands what it means to be able to do whatever you want with your life. Her song, We Can't Stop, really sets a perfect example of how the human being should live their life without a care in the world about what else is going on. Her song truly inspires listeners to go out, have fun, and do whatever they want to do. We as American citizens, free American citizens, have the freedom to party if we want to dance however we want. There's nobody in the world that can tell us otherwise. Even if they try to command our lives, we can just do what Miley would do and ignore them. It's simple. That's the beauty of living in this great nation of ours, the United States of America. Nobody but you can control your life. There's no way to program you to act a different way. You just, you can't do it. We Can't Stop is a perfect example of someone who is not giving in to what the man tells him. Really sticking it to the man. Miley has accepted the fact that she may be a little different from everyone else. I mean, everyone is. But she doesn't care, and she will not conform to what anyone wants her to be. In the end, aren't we all a little bit different in our own way? Thank you all, and God bless America. My name isn't Patrick Moran, but he improves this message.
April Fool's Day is come and gone, but before it did, we filmed some of our students having a little fun pranking their teachers. This is Joe, it's gonna be a beautiful. <laughs> Get away. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Everything will be alright. Oh, You might have noticed a collection of pictures hanging on the wall outside the gym of people we've never seen before. Look a little closer and you'll notice the words above these pictures that reads Triton Athletic Program Wall of Fame. The wall was the idea of our new athletic director, Mr. McGinnis, and is meant to inspire Triton's current athletes to reach for their highest goals. You know, the wall was to make sure that we honor and respect the people that have come before us and help build the foundation for Triton Athletics. It's a celebration and a recognition of all of the past athletes that we have had in this building. When we talk about Triton High School student athletes, we want to make sure what we are talking about. And the nine people above here are ones that were really setting the standard for high school athletics here at Triton. Um, we have two athletes on the wall that um, not only played Division I, but then even went beyond that and um, played professional sports. So Bruce Kimball graduated, was only here for two years because the school wasn't here. Um, it was built in 72, so he was the first class to enter and graduate. Um, so he was here for two years, went on and played um, at UMass, and then was recruited by, I believe, the New York Giants. But he has, what's really cool about him is he has a Super Bowl ring um, from the Washington Redskins. So, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Then on the far side, uh, Mr. Foley, we actually have one of our top student athlete awards. Mr. Foley, uh, award number 44, he was a standout student athlete here at Triton. And he unfortunately passed away early in his life. But we wanted to make sure that we honored him and all that he did in setting the standards for high school athletics here at Triton. And then um, one of the athletes on the wall, um, Robert Corkum, or, or Rob Corkum, um, went on and played professional ice hockey. Um, and for him, I think longevity. He was a decent player for sure. And I think he was in the NHL for uh, 10 seasons, which is phenomenal. Um, 
I hope what it what it does, I mean, for everybody on the wall, it was a passion. Athletics was a passion. It was the reason why we came to school was, yes, learning is important, um, but it was to play. We, we loved, loved, loved to play sports. You know, I, I think sometimes we talk about verbal motivation and kind of saying this is what we want to do, this is what we want to do, and this is what happened before. But sometimes we have to show people what actually happened before they got here and how student athletes before them were able to excel in the classroom, in the community, while playing multiple sports and excelling at those. And you've got to give them a nice end goal. And the end goal of a strong student athlete is to try to get them to an all family school and show that they're, they will have a long legacy if they're able to get into that all family. Um, I think the wall is here to recognize former athletes that we had that went through Triton. Um, we've had some good athletes that um, back in the 70s and 80s, and we certainly have great athletes that are, that are um, playing for us now. And I think it's just an opportunity for those people that um, played hard and, and had a passion for athletics get a chance to be recognized. A number of kids have said to me, how do I get on that wall? And I think you just got to work really hard. That's, it's as simple as that. So hopefully it will motivate some. Well, that's all we have for today. Tune in next week for some tips on how to prepare for prom season. Remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. For VTV, I'm Brooke. And I'm Callie. See you next week. Ciao. April 11th be the first quiet... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what the, where I got that. Obi-Wan Kenobi? <laughs> in which students across the country take a vow of... Val nope. No. <laughs> Can I be like... What? Shakers. What are you talking about? <laughs> Do we go? Oh my goodness gracious. The wall was the idea of our new athletic director, Ms. Mr. I hate that word. Trains current athletes to reach the reach four. Why is there four there? It's meant to inspire. <laughs> Hello. Is that bruise? Mm. Turn in yellow. Yuck. Yeah. 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 Yeah.